welcome back to another one. Yeah, back in the same spot. To be honest, I won't actually even go into uh, video this one. Uh, I just wanted to get out. I've done uh, I've just done a 56 hour week of nights. Five nights, four of the, the last four were 12 hour nights, so 56 hours. So I finished this morning, went to bed for a few hours, got up and thought, it's a nice day, I need to get out. So this will be me for tonight. As you saw, I've uh, done a really, really old school, simple setup with my uh, waxed canvas top against my bike. I'll give you a show in a minute. I'm just knackered. Yeah, it's just nice to get out. It's a nice day, warm. Nice bit of a breeze. You hear the birds in the air. And the contractors using the JCBs just behind you. <laughs> nah, they won't be there for long. I should have actually uh, brought some uh, a couple of beers from the uh, fridge at home because uh, the ones I bought from Aldi aren't cold yet. So I'll just give you a look at this uh, setup. It was actually not as simple as I thought. I've never actually uh, set it up before we've used it. Um, yeah, it's my waxed canvas poncho. I think I showed you it in the last video or a couple of videos ago um, where I strung it between the trees. But this time I've done it from the bike, proper old school, drifter style. Um, the problem is it's actually a little bit longer than this Sportster. I think it fits better on the Dyna, but uh, <laughs> I've got rear indicator issues again with the Dyna. I've just got a pair of second-hand ones of the, the stock ones. Well, they're actually fat boy ones, but they uh, look like they fit, so I'm going to try and have a go at fitting them tomorrow. But it's done all right. I mean, there you go. There ain't a lot of room to swing your cat in there. But that is my uh, snug pack sleeping bag again. And... I've uh, got that other one inflating uh, mattress thing again, the double one. And as you see, I've just bungeed it to the uh, things. Now, you're probably thinking, if you put it from the other side, he would have a lot more room. Yeah, you'd be right. However, and I saw this before in another video, if you put it from that side, firstly, if the bike is going to fall, if you're going to have a really, really bad day, it's going to go that way so for the sake of a few uh, extra inches of room might as well put it outside the other thing as well is if it does rain which i pray it won't tonight <laughs> um, if it was on this side the rain's going to run down onto you or at least on that side if the rain does fall down hit the bike it's going to run away that's the theory anyway we'll see well it's not particularly cold yet but I couldn't wait any longer so I've got I uh, raided the shelves of Aldi earlier and uh, I went for a selection so the first one is a Magma Hazy IPA 5.4% this Hazy IPA has been fermented hot with a something yeast KVEIK yeast which create big funky flavors of kiwi lemon and orange citrus while a blend of pungent U.S. hops delivers a bitter and fruity tang. Anyway. A lot of, a lot of algae in that river. <laughs> oh, cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is tangy. It's like eating uh, opal fruits. Except they're not called opal fruits anymore, what are they called? Forget it, I can't remember. I tell you what, right, Aldi beers are not cheap anymore. They're about 179 per can. I didn't realise until I got the checkout. I thought I'd have uh, been overcharged until I looked at the receipt. Yeah, they're not as cheap as they used to be. to see me.
right on the river bank. Watch this space. So, dinner tonight is going to be barbecued on charcoal. So, I bought this uh, full up barbecue years ago, and I think I've only used it maybe one or two times. It is a, I thought it was a UCO, but I've heard other people say Uko or Yuko, or anyway, it's a UCO flat pack. Portable grill fire pit. That is it. Um, to be honest, it is pretty good. It's quite robust. The only problem I find with it, and um, yeah, hopefully charcoal won't make a difference, but when you are burning, if you have got food on it, you can't actually add more fuel to it. you got to lift because the grill forms part of the thing. I suppose you could, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, I think it's pretty good actually. So, just to keep life simple, I've got some uh, instant uh, barbecue uh, charcoal. So, luckily, it's as easy as. I did bring a second bag because I've been so long since I barbecued and charcoal I wasn't sure uh, how long it actually uh, lasts for. I think this instant stuff as well that lights it that doesn't last as many uh, hours as the, uh, the standard charcoal. But like all charcoal it's got to burn down to uh, it becomes uh, white before you can put anything on it. Totally randomly, I uh, decided to pick up a couple of these little cans, so I've got a mojito and then I've got a gin and tonic. I'm not really a sort of cocktail or a gin drinker, but now and again, it's just nice. So let's try a mojito. For those of you that don't know, mojito is a, uh, I think it's white rum and mint, isn't it? Uh, I can't even read that. White rum, something else, I can't read it. Yeah, white rum and mint. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a bit sweet for my palate, but jolly tasty. It's only 4% as well.
I'm looking forward to dinner, actually. I uh, suddenly realised I haven't actually eaten anything since uh, about 9 o'clock last night when I was work. That's the weird thing about doing nights. You sort of lose like track of uh, your, uh, your meal times as well as your sleep. So, but I've resisted having snacks because I really actually want to uh, enjoy this dinner. That's a big secret. Won't tell you what it is just yet. <laughs> yeah, as I thought, these are uh, instant charcoal thingies uh, burn quite quickly. It must be whatever they're uh, impregnated with just to uh, help it. Well, it is. Damn, that's hot. <sighs> right, another five minutes I reckon and that uh, barbecue will be good enough to cook on. So the big secret is, um, <laughs> there is no secret, we're doing a, uh, a pork sort of mixed grill. So uh, I've got a couple of pork chops, a uh, s slice of gammon uh, steak and a couple of pork sausages um, with a couple of spring onions and uh, a sweet pepper. So we'll see how that goes. Although I was having to moan about it, it is actually quite a neat little bit of kit. Um, I suppose uh, if you think about it really, you know the disposable barbecues that you get? It's probably uh, similar to one of them because um, one bag of that uh, instant light charcoal thrown in there uh, is going to cook you a half decent meal and you don't need to think about adding more. So yeah. It's not a bad bit of kit actually. Handy for a little day trip. Just throw a bag of your uh, instant charcoal in that and then you stop and you've got uh, something to cook your uh, lunch on. So, a couple of pork sausages. A couple of pork chops and a gammon steak, which is basically bacon. If you don't know what gammon is, so there's no strategic order for doing this. We'll put the sausages on, and then we'll put the uh, pork chops on. I do find pork such a an underrated uh, meat, to be honest. And then, and also, if you are keen to support your local uh, industry, your local farmers, and that most pork you'll find uh, is uh, done local in the UK. Should have oiled that first. Some heat kicking off that uh, little uh, grill. So there really wasn't any thought went into the veg. It was more about the meat. <laughs> so I thought I'd better uh, add a bit of diversity to the plate. So a couple of spring onions. Oh, just smelling that uh, meat on the barbecue, that's making my tongue water. And sweet pepper. I don't really know how to prepare this. Let's just cut them in half. And scrape out the seeds.
Yeah, definitely a fair old bit of heat picking up. <laughs> So while uh, we're waiting on dins, we're straight into the Rockahula Tropical India Pale Ale, 5.1%. Surfs up Ang Ten for a tropical blast with flavours of grapefruit, mango and guava, riding a bitter wave of hops. This tropical brute IPA finishes crisp, dry and very Moorish. Actually, feeling the uh, the bitter weight riding the bitter wave, hanging ten, but jolly tasty. Just a smell alone. Ah. So it'd be an absolute crime to have anything pork without some applesauce. There's just nothing better than that little char on the outside and the, the taste of the charcoal. Well, not the taste, the, the uh, I don't know, smoke char, the smoke. Flavor. You know what I mean. I've just done a 56 all week. <laughs> so, for those of you folk that aren't familiar with Gammon, I don't know if it's just a UK thing or not. It's basically uh, cured pork, so it's salted, so it's bacon basically, but tends to be a bit thicker. And well worth it. Oh, I needed this as well. So hungry. A lot of the uh, rides that I've done in the last year or so, I've been up to rallies in uh, Norfolk and Suffolk and Lincolnshire over like sort of East Anglia way, and. As you're riding up, you can see like the pig farms on the side of the road. They've got those little like sort of curved corrugated uh, steel or iron shelters. Not so. It definitely is like a local um, meat. So as I said, if you are into supporting local uh, producers, as we all should be, then pork's definitely a meat that you should be trying and eating more of. I'm going to unashamedly say I finished every last mouthful. That was absolutely delicious. It really was. I think that's got to be right up there with one of the best meals I've had while I've been out camping. And such a simple one as well. And I think I didn't do this little uh, Yuko or Uko or UCO, whatever you want to call it, grill justice. I mean, it's still hot. Probably I cooked on it a little bit too soon, but I was so hungry. I couldn't wait any longer. I mean, that's, that's too hot to put your hand above it now, so that's at least an hour after it's been lit, so you've got plenty of cooking time on that. This is the thing now, it's just gone 6 o'clock, and it's already, you can see the sun's gone down. So, I'd say I think it's probably going to be uh, dark about 8 o'clock now, and that's the problem at this time of year. It's warm during the day, but uh, it gets dark again pretty quick. Those gulls that you can see, they're, uh, they're actually all hunting uh, insects. In the wing, there's loads of them about this time of night.
It's only just gone half eight and already it's dark. That's the problem now, it's like the uh, nights are closing in. Uh, it's nice so just uh, sit through the twilight. So when I come out to do these camps I always uh, have films or programs on my phone that I can watch but most of the time I just sit here and enjoy the, uh, the peace and quiet because when it starts to get dark it's like the other half of the wildlife wake up while the others lot start to go to bed Morning. Um, I was actually all right last night. It was a bit cramped, but once you were uh, settled, it was fine. Um, I didn't sleep particularly well, but it's just my body out of sync with uh, coming off uh, nights. Um, it was actually a bit warm after an hour or so, so I had to unzip my uh, sleeping bag. Um, but uh, yeah, it was on and off for a few hours. Um, and then I think I was awake for probably a couple of hours through the night listening to uh, the owls again. I think the monk jacks were uh, wandering around because I could hear a bit of crunching behind me. Either that or a fox came over to sniff the barbecue. <laughs> but yeah, fairly pleasant night. Uh, probably wouldn't be my first choice of setup if I'm honest. It's okay for uh, emergencies, I suppose, but. Um, yeah, did what it was meant to do. Anyway, I'm going to get packed up and head home. So I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.